and like previously let's just cross check those clients requirements script needed to work in the german revit user interface this in particular script 2.1 needed to work in the architectural bow model as i told you it needs to work with uh, tegia or mep ifc files when you have in the ifc files ducts pipes cable trays or generic models because most likely when you receive ifc files you will find generic models for mep not ducts pipes and cable trays now there is a part of the, of the script which i did create on the customer requirement and when somebody insert ifc and then manually position that in the model the script is able to correct that translation and rotation of the ifc uh, because there is a problem when you manually position the model in the dynamo you will see the elements on that location where you originally inserted uh, that part i will not show in this video my opinion regarding uh, that part is that you should not manually position any kind of the link manually in the model you should finish everything with the positioning with internal origin or share coordinates or any of other methods but in any case you should not manually position elements in the revit and okay then i will show you what specifics we have regarding the recognition of the parameters and uh, yes the script needs to work with one category by time so you will need to run the script multiple times because the client actually want to include like hundred of different rules inside the script so uh, you cannot have a fully optimized experience when the script needs to check 30 of uh, logics and you have so many if this then that if this then that so uh, because of that uh, the script is not highly optimized but it works okay now in the revit what we have over here is because we are in the bow or architectural model uh, we have floors and walls as a our host element but also we have an ifc and we have we will test the script uh, against two types of the ifc in this first file tegia uh, point ifc we have provisions so let's say that somebody did create those provisions in some software and we did receive those provisions as a ifc uh, elements what is very important for us so i'm going now through the ifc to to select one element to see the category and also to see a characteristic parameters so with the tab i can grab one element and i can see that the category of the elements is a, a this is a generic model category and because the element uh, is a rectangular element we will use uh, those parameters are height and in the brackets dimension for the height and for the width we will use this parameter width and in the brackets uh, dimensions for a round elements same category and the parameter which we will use in order to set uh, dimension is this diameter in brackets dimension um, and i think that round ducts and round pipes have the same parameter diameter dimensions that's okay so let's now start uh, the script uh, 2.1 so uh, in the script 2.1 first we want to test this situation so now in our architectural model we need to create provisions and we will took those provisions from ifc as a reference uh, i did talk about this so i did create here inside the script entire logic to deal with uh, situation when you are, when you did manually position ifc link but i do not recommend that you do that so over here i will choose no uh, we didn't position ifc manually and we have three layer user interface for that because if you did you will need to select some reference elements but i will not show you that now and now uh, what we have inside the IFC, which category? At first we want to deal with the generic models. Again, we can force everything to be rectangular if we want. Uh, we go against uh, Wanda, this is a wall. We want to read 
uh, those elements from, from this Tegia IFC. Later we will also use Tegia installation in order to work with uh, ducts, cable trays and pipes, but for now we want to use Tegia. Offset, we, we can add offset if we want, and again we have some custom parameters. Uh, I will skip changing that part for now, and also now we need to change a parameter for the elements uh, that we want to retrieve and to create those provisions. So for example, let's go at first with rectangular elements against the wall. So in order to, to uh, type over here what is the parameter names, we did see uh, a minute ago, instead of remembering that and typing, I will just copy paste those parameter names. Uh, those parameter names, uh, it will be different for different IFC files. And now finally, because we have a different logic if we are working with installation or we, if we are working with the generic models, over here we have a question, inputs are provision families, yes, those are provision families and set values. And now we did create that rectangular elements, so this is probably a provision created for a rectangular duct. Over here uh, we have provisions that are created for the uh, cable trays, so all rectangular provisions that we did have in the IFC are now in our model. And now if we want to check dimensions, so our family, uh, this provision for void which is now in the our model, uh, have dimension 800 millimeters with 600 millimeters and we did include that offset 50 millimeters per side. That original element did have a dimension 700 by 500. So we did create uh, element with good size on the correct location. Now let's create that for the round elements. Again, we will run the script. Didn't position manually IFC. Uh, those uh, provisions from IFC are generic model. Uh, we are going against the wall. This is a correct link. Uh, I, I will leave those parameters. And now we need for, because we are changing uh, the parameter name for the round elements, we will use this diameter dimension. And yes, we have provision as an input from IFC. Again, we have our elements over here on the correct location. Uh, over here, so the dimension of this element, what is the diameter? Diameter is 200 and our element is 350 millimeters offset per side. We can change that. Uh, this is a 300 and the dimension of our elements is 400. Okay, now we need to create same elements against the floor. So it's a generic model versus floor, same link. We can change the offset, offset can be a zero. Uh, I did copy paste this parameter and yes, we have provisions in IFC. I don't know if we even have round elements for floor. No, instead of floor we only have rectangular elements. Okay, let's do this again. Now we should create rectangular provisions with offset zero. Now it's maybe hard to see. Let's turn off uh, IFC for a moment. So I will turn off IFC. So on those places, maybe to also turn off walls. So on the places where we have and maybe transparency for the floor. So let's say 50% transparency. This is for the wall. So those elements are in the floor. Let's 
check that against IRC. And I think that we have on the same places with the same rotation and same dimension those openings in the floor. Okay, now I will turn on walls again. I will delete those generated generic models. Okay. And now I will turn on I will turn off this IRC where we have provisions as a generic model. So I will now turn on uh, Tegia installation IRC and also I will turn visibility of ducts, that's Luft Canal, this category, pipe which is this category and cable tray which is a cable truss, this category. Okay, now all those installations are in Cytegia uh, underscore installation IFC. Again, we should see, uh, we should grab at least one uh, rectangular and one uh, round element in order to check the parameters. So with the tab I'm going through IFC, I did grab one duct. Again, we have a rectangular duct. Parameter names which we will use. Let's just see again the same parameters, high dimensions and width dimensions. Those are the pipes. For pipes, we have special parameter. Uh, dimension. We will use this diameter and in the brackets mechanical. And for the round ducts, we will use the parameter. diameter dimensions. Everything else is basically the same. Again, we need to run the interface a couple of times in order to create all those provisions. Script 2.1. Uh, we didn't position that IFC manually. And now we are going category by category. So now we are not dealing with the generic models. We have cable trays over here. We will go against the wall. I think that our cable trays are not going through the floor. Uh, we are now choosing this second link, Tegia installations. I will not change those parameters. Again, parameters, because those are rectangular elements. They have those parameter names. And now provision families are not the input. Set values. And we did insert those two provisions for the rectangular elements. Okay, now again, for all other installations and other categories. Let's go with ducts, ducts against the wall, tagging an installation, again, same parameters. We only have one provision. Let's go again with ducts, but this time we want to play with round parameter. Now we have those provisions and those provisions behind again the thickness of the provision must be the same as the thickness of the wall or if we are creating the provision for the floor then the thickness of the provision must be the same as the floor finally we have ducts versus the category of the floor and we are changing again height and width And finally, we have pipes.
for pipes we are using this parameter as I did show that is it and we have also uh, provisions between the pipes and the floors and I didn't mention in the previous video for pipes we are checking the dimension against the Excel file and I think that we did create all those provisions and just briefly, so before I show you the script 2.2, uh, what is the requirements? Again, it must uh, work in the German Revit user interface, it must work in the architectural model, uh, and it will cut all the provisions against the architectural elements. If the status of those provisions is okay, everything that we did create so far, because I didn't change that custom parameter, uh, all those provisions have that status okay. So uh, Revit will just uh, took all those provisions with that status and it will try to cut either floors or walls. And the script doesn't have user interface. And that is it uh, for the script 2.1. We are going now to the script 2.2. And the script 2.2 doesn't have the user interface. If I turn off the IFC. Uh, basically the script 2.2 will just took all those provisions and we, it will cut architectural elements uh, similar like in the video number one that is it thank you for watching bye